Hi, I'm Kevin Clay and this is the instructional video for your new Very Grind grinding attachment. When you buy the kit, the kit comes in two forms. It comes in the deluxe kit with the Wolverine grinding base in case you don't already have a Wolverine grinding jig and all the other pieces you need. It comes with the adjusting arm, the mounting arm, and the two pieces you need for the base. So to install it, the easiest thing to do is take the adjusting arm and put it in the grinding jig base and put the long side up. Remove the carriage bolt and put the carriage bolt into the mounting arm. The mounting arm is slotted so you get height adjustment and the adjusting arm is slotted so you get side to side. So you can adjust for the height of your grinder and you can get centered on your wheel. As a good place to start, you want the height of the mounting arm set so that the bottom of the mounting arm is even with the bottom of the adjusting arm. You want to set it up so it's sort of square. That's pretty much the setup for that part. And then you have to assemble the head. Carriage bolt comes out, goes in. And that's all there is to it. Okay, now that we've got the jig set up, I'm going to go very quickly over how to grind tools. Now, there's two tools that we're interested in grinding. We're going to put a fingernail grind onto a spindle gouge, and we're going to put a side grind onto a bull gouge. The difference between a spindle gouge and a bull gouge grind is that when you're doing a bull gouge, you want to have a fair amount of sweep and only a small amount of roll. And with a fingernail grind on a spindle gouge, you want a large amount of roll and only a small amount of sweep. The adjusting rod on the very grind 2 is what controls the amount of roll versus the amount of sweep. Now, the one thing that makes this jig unique and is patented is that we move the adjusting rod about the tooltip so that the tooltip is always at the center of the adjusting rod. So, when we're going to grind a tool, we want to stick it out so that this rod is pointing at the tooltip, which is set by a dimension of one and three quarter inches. So, what I have here is a block. I've drilled a hole in it, inch and three quarter deep, and I just use this as a gauge for my stick out. So all our tools should stick out the same amount. Now that that tool is stuck out inch and three quarter, when we put it in the jig and on the wheel, that tool will stay centered on the wheel. And that is a direct result of the geometry of the jig. It allows us to set any sweep and roll and the tool will stay centered on the wheel. So when we are grinding a side grind on a bull gouge, we want the leg closer to the bottom than it is to the top. There's graduations on the back of the jig and we want to set it so that the top of the leg is about four graduations down. So one, two, three, four, down and away. Now what we want to do is we want to set the bevel angle on the nose by adjusting the arm in or out. This one's fairly close so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the grinder on and I'm just going to lightly touch the tool on the wheel. Now 
Now, I'm just grinding up on the tool. I'm not down low on the bevel, I'm up high. So I've got to move the jig, the adjusting arm in a little bit. If I was just grinding on the heel, I'd have to move it out a little bit. Okay, now I've got even contact on the whole bevel, so I'm gonna grind the tool. Now, while you're grinding, the jig will take care of the bevel on the nose, and it'll take care of the bevel on the side. But it is not gonna do anything to control the shape. That's up to you. For example, if I were to set this on the jig and just set it on the wheel and not move it at all, I would wind up with a tool that was just grind square across. If I were to set it just on one side and not move it, and then set it on the other side and not move it, I would wind up with a tool that just came to a, a point. So you've got to watch the shape that's developing as you're grinding. So, I've got the entire bevel cleaned up on both sides. That tool is sharp, ready to go. So if you look at the tool from the side, you can see we've got a straight line from the tip of the tool to the corner of the tool. The bevel is stubby rather than long. And from the top, looking down at the flutes, we've got a smooth profile with no bumps or ridges that the cutting edge has followed the flute of the tool. Grinding a fingernail grind on a spindle gouge is done much the same way. We're going to set the tool in the jig and we're going to stick it out inch and three quarter. Now we want the jig to do a lot of rolling and only a small amount of sweeping, so we're going to move the leg to the up position. You can see how that rod is pointing at the tool tip, same as it was for the bull gouge. That means that as long as we have that inch and three quarter, the tool is going to stay centered on the wheel. We're just going to touch the tool to the wheel, and I can see I'm grinding only on the heel, so that means I have to bring the adjusting arm back. There I've got good contact on the whole bevel, so I'm going to grind. So, the bevel's cleaned up, the tool will be sharp, ready to use. The spindle gouge has the same requirements as a bull gouge. You've got a straight line from the tip of the cutting edge to the corner. On this one though, the bevel is longer rather than shorter. But again, if you look at it from the top view of the flutes, You've got a nice smooth curve all the way around the end of the tool. If the tool is getting too pointy, the easy solution to that is to grind more on the point of the tool to get it nicely rounded. If it's not pointy enough, you want to grind more on the sides of the tool. Again, all the jig does is it controls the relationship. It controls the bevel and the relationship with the bevel on the side. It's up to you to control the shape. Okay, so far we've discussed how to sharpen both a spindle gouge and how to sharpen a bowl gouge if you have an existing grind already on the tools. But what if you're a new wood turner 
and you've got a sharp and a gouge and what you've got is what came out of the box and it is not shaped with a side grind. Well the steps for turning a out of the box tool into any shape tool that you want that is correct for that tool is the same for both a spindle gouge and a bullet gouge and right now I'm going to go through how to get the correct shape on your turning tools starting with a tool out of the box. Every turning tool has elements that are common to it. It has an angle on the nose, it's got a profile that you can see from the side, and it's got a shape that you can see from the flute. Now, the bevel angle on the end is a function of what you want the tool to be doing and how long you want the tool to last. Like any other woodworking tool, a tool that's got a long bevel on it is going to cut cleaner, but it's not going to last as long. So for something like spindles where you're turning coves and beads, a lot of intricate cuts, you want to get as good a finish off the tool as you want, but you're not typically removing a lot of material, so you want a longer bevel. With a bull gouge, right, you are going to be doing a lot more cutting of the wood. There's a lot more wood inside of a bowl and on the outside of a bowl than there is in a spindle. So you're going to need a stronger edge. And because the shape of a bowl is relatively easy to sand, we're not necessarily as concerned about getting as clean a cut off the tool. As long as the tool is sharp enough that we're not tearing out the end grain, the tool is sharp enough. So on a bowl gouge, you want probably a 40 degree bevel. So if we were to go from here, to that way it should be 40 degrees and shorter rather than long and on this one same thing we want a 60 degree bevel longer rather than short so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish the bevel on the nose second thing we're going to do is we're going to establish the side profile of the tool every turning tool should be basically a straight line from the tip of the tool to the end of the cutting edge if you look at it from the side. Spindle gouge, you've got a straight line from there to the tip. Bull gouge, as it comes out of the box, same thing. We're going to change that, we're going to make it longer. And last thing we want, and that's what we're going to basically work on with the, with the Vera grind, is the profile from the top. So I'm going to go through the two steps that you should do first to set up a new tool. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the tool, I'm going to set it down, and I'm going to grind the bevel at the angle that I want it to be. There's not a big need to take off a lot of material. This is just going to be a gauge for when we start grinding the tool with the very grind tube. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to establish the side profile, and we're basically going to set the tool and we're going to press the flutes straight into the wheel and we're going to grind it so that we've got about half an inch from the tip to the end of the cutting edge. So, now I have a straight line from the tip of the tool to the end of the cutting edge. And if I look at the tool, I've got two large flats. So, all I have to do now is set the tool into the very grind two, set the angle by adjusting the arm so that I get the bevel angle correct, set the leg in the position for a side ground gouge, and then all I have to do is grind until this tool is sharp and I'll have the correct shape. So I'm going to set the tool out the inch and three quarter. I'm going to set the leg down about uh, four notches from the top. That pretty much matches up the angle that I have on the tip of the tool, which is about 40 degrees. Now all I have to do is grind. 
I'm actually going to switch to this wheel. This is my fine wheel. I'm going to switch to my coarse wheel so we can get this done a little quicker. Just so you know, the wheels that I'm using are a 54 grit on the coarse wheel and an 80 grit for my fine wheel. When you're grinding these tools, there's a lot of material on the side of the tool and very little material on the nose. So you probably want to spend most of your time grinding on the sides and then very lightly sweep around the nose so you don't grind it off. And the more you grind off the nose, the shorter that tool gets. I always set the tool down on the side because if I were to set it down hard on the nose, it would take quite a bit of material grinding off that to maybe get the shape back. So if I set it down on the side, if I set it down a little hard, not paying attention to what I'm doing, I'm not going to decrease the length of the tool. So there's that tool, started from scratch, set the nose angle, grind the side profile so it's a straight line from the cutting tip to the end of the cutting edge, into the very grind too, and then all I have to do is grind until all the flats go away and the tool is sharp. And I have a properly shaped and sharpened side grind. You can use the exact same procedure when you're doing a spindle gouge.